this feud has sucked. But we got to this match, and I thought, well, Jerry Lawler knows what he's doing. Knows what he's doing. Roddy Piper knows what he's doing. Sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. No. Really? This is not fine. Let me let me speak, since apparently I'm going to be in the minority here. All right? Now, did I think this was a good match? I would not say that this was a good match. How are you in the minority, then? Well, because, you know, what's funny about it is it is one of those matches where, you know, it feels like everybody does everything right, but somehow still doesn't have a good match. See? Okay. I don't think anyone did anything right. No. Listen, Vinny. Listen. you got to watch this match again. No. No. Because I... <laughs> Just went on a big rant about how god fucking awful Rowdy Roddy Piper's promos were every single week leading up to this match. They were atrocious. They were an absolute atrocity. I thought, as a fair man, I thought that Roddy Piper was fucking unbelievable in this match. And I thought that his intensity at the beginning was great. I thought his brawling at the beginning was great. I thought when Lawler got the heat on him, I thought his selling was fucking great. It was absolutely, totally not traditional pro wrestling selling at all. He was selling like a guy that was in a fight. And he would be hit. And, of course, part of the greatness of it is is whatever you want to think of this match and, and everything else, Jerry Lawler can throw a fucking awesome punch. I could see that point. And Both he is throwing these fucking great punches. And Piper is selling it by, like, he slumps into the ropes, and the ropes are holding him up. Like, everyone always uses that term, like, the ropes are holding him up. And it's like, nah, he's holding himself up. He's grabbing onto the ropes and everything. But Piper's literally, he slumps into the ropes, and the ropes hold him up, and then he kind of slumps into the second rope, and he fights to his feet, and Lawler hits him. And he's, his fucking selling was so great in this match. I thought Roddy Piper was absolutely unbelievable. It was like he was absolutely unbelievable in a match that really wasn't very good. It was weird. Like, yeah. I've seen this before with other people where, you know, a good example is, you know, people talk about the Bret hart Shawn Michaels Iron Man match at Mania 96 or whatever. And it's like, that wasn't that good a match. I mean, it was it was good, but it wasn't great. But, like, if you watch it, like, both guys were great. They were two guys that were great in a match that was just good. And this match was a match where I didn't think Lawler was really all that great. I mean, he threw great punches, but, you know, I, this was not Lawler's best. But I thought Piper's, his offense and his selling, I thought were just great. Am I the only one? Well, let's get into this and why I like this so much less than you did. Roddy Piper comes out with a skinny kid. Well, I would Hell call, yeah, that was dumb. I would just call skinny from this point on. And skinny notes, they came to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and they're all out of bubble gum as he is chewing gum. Mm hmm. Roddy Piper is shredded. This dude, like, at WrestleMania, like... He was in great shape. Yeah, he was super, super lean and cut and muscular. So they start to wrestle. Can someone explain to me the spot where Lawler pushes Piper on the ropes and does a drop down, and Roddy jumps <laughs> over him, and Lawler just stays down? Well, now, <laughs> I mean, honestly, what I think was going on here was I think that Roddy wanted to work a fight... And Lawler decided he was going to call a spot. And Roddy's just like running like, what the fuck am I jumping over you for? And then he just stomped on him. And then they brawled. I think he was supposed to stomp him the first time. Yeah, he may, we, that, that may have been, yeah. Because been, yeah. a minute later, they tried the other, tried the other way around with Piper doing a drop down. He dropped down to his back, which looked weird. And he blocked a stomp. So Lawler decides, I can't beat up Roddy Piper. I will try to beat up Skinny. And he's leaving the ring to attack the Skinny guy. Piper keeps stopping him over. Yeah, but it felt like a and fight. Over. And over. It's like Roddy thought he was going to shoot on the skinny kid, and so he was shoot trying to defend this poor kid's life. And it, it felt like somebody was... It felt like they had this plan that will do this thing and it'll end in this way, but somebody forgot the ending. And so they just kept doing it over and over mm. and over again until somebody remembered. Finally, like Lawler pushes the skinny kid into the ring... And the idea is going to be that Roddy Piper will lay across the skinny kid and take the beating to protect him. What actually happens is he covers a part of him and all of them start stomping him and Piper climbs off and the kid just lies there and won't leave the ring. So Piper's got to go over and cover him again. 
and again and again. Finally, he's no longer trapped in the ring. The ref just kicks him out or something. At this point, between the feud and the first half of this match, I was ready to write this off as honestly one of the worst feuds I've ever seen. But then, Brian, you are correct. I got to watch Jerry Lawler throw punches and Roddy Piper sell them. God damn, it was amazing. That's all I wanted. Thank you. That's all I wanted. Thank you. And that two minutes there was awesome. So, yeah, aside from the punches being thrown, I mean, Piper threw a pretty good punch himself. Sometimes. Um, there's some okay. times where you line up and because he did have a boxing breaker and he'd throw a good jab. And, and yeah. sometimes he would just go there and be a frenetic wild animal. He's just throwing open hand palms to the shoulders. But so well, it was a fight. It was it was they can't all look beautiful. It, it was intense. It was intense. Other than that, there was a pile driver and three bulldogs. Yeah. And that was it. That was all the wrestling moves. And there was a suplex in here somewhere. Oh, the finish. I, I, yeah, yeah that was. finish. Holy shit. He... There's a ref bump. Lawler does a gimmick shot. Tries to pin with his feet on the ropes. The guy set it up so the skinny kid pushes his feet off. and they... No one was sure he's going to remember the spot. So it's all done yeah. in slow, 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 slow motion. And Lawler goes after the kid. Turns his back to Piper. So Piper hits a back suplex and does just the wackiest cradle you've ever seen. He basically put himself in rear guard. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing with that was... He gave okay, his back. The referee got bumped, and Lawler hits the gimmick, and the referee wakes up. So, yeah, the ref, he should do his one, two, and you're like, no, is a kid going to move the feet? And the kid moves, ah! But then when, when, when Piper hit the back suplex and, like, spun over around for the cover, the ref should have done a normal count. Yeah, but he decided to do another slow ass count. Yeah, and so like Poor Lawler, Piper's got to levitate. Yeah, he's got to stay in this fucking <laughs> position for an hour. Lawler's got to lay in his back like a fucking turtle. And you know, there's nothing worse. You guys, the guy, you guys don't wrestle. Like, you think about you, when you're wrestling, you think about a lot of things that you don't really need to think about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where you know when you're in the corner. And the guy climbs up to the middle rope, and he's gonna he's gonna be doing the punches in the corner. You know, the guy that's getting punched. I mean, honestly, you really don't got to do much because everyone's looking at the other guy. But I always felt like I needed to do something, and so you know, you you kind of walk in place or whatever, and the guy's hitting you and everything like that. You're always thinking of doing something you really don't need to do. But you know, it's it was with, like with Lawler, he's on his back. And he's got to be in his back for like six hours because his fucking referee's counting like his, a glacial speed. So, you know, in his brain, he thinks, well, I got to struggle. <laughs> but like, you can't actually struggle because Roddy Piper is, is balanced on you like you're a fucking yoga ball. Like, if you move too much, he's going to fucking tip over. And so literally, all you can do is you lay flat on your back and you kind of go like this <laughs> with your hands or something stupid. Like, this was so bad. It was a fucking referee's fault. It wasn't Piper's fault, and it wasn't Lawler's fault. It was a referee. It uh, was crazy that they put the trust of the finish of a main event on pay-per-view in the hands of a kid. Well, he got his spot. He did. Got his he spot. Hit the, he, hit the, he hit the spot, but man. Well, you know, Roddy could have kicked out. Lawler could have pulled his shoulder up. Yeah. A lot of things that could happen. So there you go. Kid could have held his feet on the ropes. There you go. <laughs> There's a Coliseum exclusive video where HBK gives Diesel a pep talk. Yeah, these Coliseum exclusives were something else. There's this one, the Piper one. Yeah. I forget what else. That Piper one should have stayed on the Coliseum week. videotape. And I can't believe the... Yeah. Cutting room floor. Yeah, yeah. The, the key line here is where Sean assures Diesel, you beat him within an, inch, within an inch of your life. You should be world champion now. There's a big future for you as long as you're with the Heartbreak Kid. And that's going to be a long time. Well, that's it, everybody. That's your show. And, uh, man, kind of went out with a whimper. Also. Did it not? That was a thumbs in the middle show. That was definitely a thumbs in the middle There was some good stuff. Show. There was some bad stuff. Everybody wanted us to make sure we made it through King of the Ring. Why? I don't know. Can anybody answer? I think they thought we would hate it a lot more than we did. They're gluttons. It was just, it was just there. there. I'll tell you what we are going to hate. <laughs> <laughs> NWA TNA starting next Tuesday. Wow, there's a selling point. You can follow along. People are here starting. On Impact Plus. And I'm told that the first five episodes, I believe, are free on YouTube. So you can follow along for a while for free. All right. You can but, save a uh, month. Yeah, sign up uh, for uh, everything and uh, enjoy it because it's going to be something else, let me tell you. And then uh, what is the date of the first show, Dagan? Dagan, it's 21 years ago this week. <laughs> But next week. But next, yeah. but next week, of course. 
The so first one. On or about June 20th. It's June 19th. Oh, that's right. The same June 19, day. 19, 2022. Morning. That's right, yes. yes, that's the day that they kick and off. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you, Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow. Look at oh, that, everybody. Wow. Holy smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So animals? you're telling me that my cat is from another planet? Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. He's not a foot taller than me. God. He's got the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Dreisack and Ideal Mexican. Mexican. Mexican yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His panties. <laughs> yeah, he saw his Dreisack. S A J W N G A W If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.